Um, okay, so we discussed earlier in the week the position of the Ramban, that even though the Torah doesn't, uh, doesn't say that Avram sinned, by going down to Mitzrayim, the Ramban does not, um, does not recoil um, from from accusing Avram of sin that Chazal did not attribute to him, that the Psukim don't explicitly attribute to him. And he contends that um, the, the reason the Jews had to end up in Mitzrayim for however many years they ended up in Mitzrayim was because Avram went down to Mitzrayim, which was a failed test. And he was supposed to stay, and he didn't. Um, so the Ramban, following in this, in this theory, and the Radak as well, who's... Um, find yet another sin in this week's parasha, which here the Torah does seem to point a little bit more uh, in its direction, but it's also not clear. And that is in Peretet Zion. So what happens? Sarai should Avram lo yodo lo v'lo shivcha mitzrit u'shmagar that Sarai has no children, but she has a maidservant Hagar. So what does she do? She gives him to Avram as a wife. Gives him to as a wife. Now this seems to have been a thing. Um, right, even if you're not an academic uh, scholar and you don't know anything about the ancient Near East, but you know Chumash very well, you know that this is a thing. Because how many times in Bereshit alone does this mo- the, does this uh, setup happen? Three. three, three, right? At least three, right? <coughs> I, didn't <know coughs> three. The, I didn't know about the other both of them. I knew Rachel to, had for. Right, so first had Rachel does it. She has no children, and what does she say? Right, when when Rachel has no children. We'll get to Leah because Leah is a bit of a l- l- bit odd. Um, but Rachel has no children, so what does she do? She gives her maidservant Billa to Yaakov, and then what happens when she has a child? What does she call? What does she call the child? Wait, her actual child? No, no. When Billa has the child, oh, uh, that's more important actually for these purposes. Naftali? Yeah, Naftali. Why? He's the president. And what's the end of the pasuk? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not like you. I don't know the Tanakh by heart. No, no. You're speaking Machmir, but you're not supposed to say pesukim um, bal Really? Correct. So I'm supposed to have Yosher Lemon Ral Pet. Wait, so every time I say it, like when people pull it in, I finish the pasuk for them. Is that a bad thing? Just share for another time. Share for another time. Okay, so. She says, Vatomer Rachel, so that I won't violate either, I'll read it at the Basak. Vatomer Rachel, Naftule Elohim Niftalti, Imachoti Gam Yacholti, Vatagrosham, Mo Naftali. Right now I am competing with my sister. Right now I've, right, meaning before I had no children, now I have. Right? Ulai, um, I mean, what's the, what's the, this, this model? This model isn't just like, you know, you're going to have children. Like, it was actually seen as your, as a surrogate. Or that was basically the, the legal construct we're talking about. And then Leah wants to compete, and so she does as well, even though she actually has children. Um, now, we, we know from the ancient Near East that this was a thing. Um, this wasn't just like, you know, it happens three times in Bracet, and that's the only time it happens in the ancient, Near world, uh, ancient world. It happens all the time. And this was just a, this was, you know, in a world without IVF, and without fertility treatment, you needed some other way of... Uh, of Allowing people who are barren to have children, and this was the model they so, come up with. Well, didn't they have those leaves that. Isn't there a whole section in the Chumash talking about, like, no. the plant ants? No. What? No. There's a section in, in Rashi, if that's what you're referring to. But, um, <laughs> but no, it does not appear in the Pasuk. Sorry. Um, I mean, look, they've always had fertility treatments of sorts, right? Whether they worked or not is a different story, right? They didn't have, you know, IVF is shockingly more successful than uh, huh. random herbs. Um, anyways. Um, fine. But, <clears throat> then what happens? Um, Hagar becomes pregnant right away, which was the plan. But then the plan breaks down, because what does Hagar then do? Hagar? Yeah. Uh, she, when she breaks down? The plan breaks down. Because what does <laughs> Hagar do? What, what, what happens? Yeah. Right, so, what did Pshat, Pshat, Pshat? Right, I mean, what did, okay, never, let's prove I it. Hagar. Right, what did, what did Sarah say to to Avram. Ulai ibanem imena. Right? I will be built up. Right? Meaning this is part of that model. That Hagar will, so to speak, so to speak, be the surrogate, but the child will be Sarah's. Right? Will be Sarah and Avram's, essentially. And instead, what happens? Vatera ki harata vatekal gvirta beinah. It's not the way it is now when you think about surrogate. No, it's the ancient equivalent of a surrogate. You're not actually taking out the child, but it was the but the child would be raised by 
Sarah. Yeah. Right? That's the plan. Right? And, but what happens? But that only works if what? If there's a recognition that at some level the woman is still... Parent? No, not the... the sorry, the mother. Or the actual mother. Right, the biological mother. Right, it's still the maidservant. But what happens? It breaks down because Hagar says... Now she starts looking down on Sarah. Sarah is furious. And she says to Avram, my anger is lit, lit against you. I gave my um, I gave my maidservant to you, and now she's pregnant, and I've become lower in her eyes. May God judge between us. Right? So Avram says, Look, So Avram says, Take her back, do whatever you want. Right? Right? Oppress her, go ahead. And she oppresses her so much that she runs away. So here, right, again, as we mentioned, the Ramban and the Radak are not afraid of reading sin in. And the Ramban says, Chata imenu binu zeh. Sarah was wrong. She sinned. The gam Avrano Avram bini cholasot kain. Avram was also wrong. Right? They both failed this test. Right? This is like a right refrain in the Ramban. Right? Rashi is like there are ten tests and he failed all of them. Yeah, he's already passed all of them. The Ramban is like here tests you didn't even know existed and he fa- and <laughs> they failed and they failed. Right? V'sham Hashem on Yom and Atan no bein she apera adam lasot zera Avram v'sara b'chol minei yinui. And then what was the punishment? Uh, Yishmael, who would then oppress the Jewish people, right? So the Ramban, you know, sees sort of future, so to speak, Yishmael for, Jews. For yeah, foreshadowing of more punishment. <coughs> the Radak says the same thing. Um, now, um, the Radak doesn't seem to think that the Inui was a problem at all. The Ramban seems to think that the very fact that he oppre- that she oppressed Haga was wrong. Um, the Radak seems not to say that he said, um, he worked her, she worked her too hard, which should set off bells in your head, right? And she did what? She worked her with back-breaking labor. Where's that Pasuk from? Betrayim. Right. I mean, what is the Radak already implying? Maybe she cursed her and beat her. She, ne- she was neither ethical nor righteous in what she did. So, he's, so she says, uh, sorry, the, the Radak says, she sinned, first of all, she sinned against Avram because Avram said, do whatever you want, but it was also disrespectful to Avram because now this was the mother of his child. Um, and it's not a midat chasidut for you to do whatever you can. Technically, you're allowed to legally, but um, right, but you shouldn't do it. Now, some of the modern ones have picked up this radak and said, right here, there's an implication, like with the Ramban before, that not only were they punished, but the specific punishment was. Mitzrayim. That one of the punishments was Mitzrayim, because obviously, right, Hagar's from Mitzrayim, and the, those key words, Inui Bufarech. Um, so again, you see this this theme, and and right, you can follow the words. You can see where they get this from, right? The Inui and the the running away, right, and the um, and obviously, right, the whole Mitzrayim element here does support a certain level. Of uh, just like we saw before, of parallelism, which indicates that one may have caused um, the other. Um, now, in a in a sort of twist of uh, fate, um, right? Normally, um, people critique academics um, for being too harsh, right? Not having reverence for Chazal um, or the their traditions or the members of Tanakh, um, and trying to right undermine them. Um, ironically, as Rav Samet points out in an article. Um, if you know anything about the ancient Near East and you take advantage of academic Jewish studies at all, um, you might actually end up with the opposite conclusion here that Sarah did not sin. Um, because in the Code of Hammurabi, um, it actually says that there is a law. If a woman is barren and she gives her maidservant to her husband to have a child, so the woman is somewhat elevated. But... If the woman treats herself as the equal of her maidservant, she's returned to slavery 
and the maidservant puts a sign of slavery back on her to show her place. That was the law, right? Like I said, this was a model, right? If you were barren, you gave your maidservant to your husband to have a child, but you were supposed to remember you were a maidservant because the child was supposed to be the mistress, right? The 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 master, right? The the master woman's child. But if you, the servant, try to use that as an opportunity to to become the equal, so the punishment was you were returned to slavery. Now, Yoshi Farajun points out that the truth is this is even worse. Because the law was if you treat yourself as an equal once you have the baby. And what did Hagar do? She started the bad treatment of Sarah starting at conception and she didn't treat herself as her equal she treated herself as Sarah's superior right because take out give her tabe now right and if so he points out that if the normal law was if your maidservant misunderstands the new arrangement and treats herself as your equal then you remove her you bring her back to her previous state of slavery then what happens if she treats you as lower than her and she starts at conception so then you have to drill the point home. Now, which that combined with the fact that what does the Malach tell Hagar? Go back and accept the Inui. Right? So you combine our little knowledge of ancient Near East plus the fact that the Malach doesn't seem to be bothered by this because he said, yeah, go back and you might actually be led to the conclusion that no, this is wrong. Right? That Sarah was correct. She was just following the rules Hagar had sinned and this was the normal punishment. Now, you could really have it both ways if you want, right? and this is sort of the middle position, which is to say, look, Sarah was within her rights. But as the Radak said, still, it's, lo- lo- it's not midal chasidut, because just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean you should do it. Right? So you really have three possibilities here. Right? You could read this as a pure sin, as one of the reasons for Mitzrayim. You could take the ancient Near East into account, plus the fact that Malach seems to have no problem with it, and say, no, we just misunderstood the story. Sarah is totally fine with this. Or you could take a middle approach and say, look, it's true that Sarah is not an evil woman. She's not coming out of nowhere. This was the norm. Hagar violated the norms, and Sarah had to set, the, set it straight that this was going to be her child, so to speak, not Hagar's, which is not what happened in the end. Right In the end... It becomes Hagar's child and Sarah gets her own. That still doesn't mean she was perfectly correct. She still could have been punished for going beyond what she had to do, right? For being Ma'ana her more. Um, but here again, you see this notion of looking sometimes for sins that may not exist, but, you know, what the what these other indications um, from, uh, ironically, academic Jewish studies point out is you shouldn't be always so so quick, right? Even if you're willing to look for Averot, that doesn't mean they're always there, and even if they're there, they might not be as bad as you think. You need a full picture, right? Bain Latov, Bain Lara.